So the new Angel fish tank has been set up a week. First problems are occurring now. I feel like I do this quite often. You set up the tank, next video, wow, there's problems. Do you know why? Because there almost always is. <laughs> Very, very, very rarely do I set up a tank that just goes, uh, don't do anything, couple of water changes, everything's perfect. I knew this wasn't gonna be one of them because there's lots of stocking um, and there's lots of light. So there's a couple of key issues that I want to sort straight away. So if you remember this really nice moss that we can see here, looking fantastic, right? Wrong. <laughs> All that stuff that's on it, that sort of webbing, is cyanobacteria, the bane of every fish keeper's life. Now, whenever I used to see this, I used to massively freak out panic mode because uh, when I first started the hobby, this used to come along and I didn't know what to do about it. And it used to take over the tank and I didn't, I was just lost, I just didn't know. But nowadays I've seen it happen a many number of times and it's a link between light, um, new setups for instance, unestablished tanks, that kind of thing. So obviously that moss was in the setup before and there wasn't cyanoacrylate all over it. So why is there now? Well, before we had much, much more floating plants, didn't we? There was way less light coming through and probably hitting that moss. I mean, it was obviously always there. I think cyanobacteria is active in every single aquarium. It's just, if the conditions are right, it triggers like the growth of it to go over everything and that horrible sort of slimy look. So if I was to now trim that moss and trim the uh, cyanobacteria off, suck it out of the tank, that kind of thing, then it more than likely just comes straight back because I haven't changed the conditions at all. Now I've read online and been told multiple times that all you gotta do is do a blackout on your tank for like a week or something, all, all gone, job done. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't wanna sit with a black tank for a week, thanks very much. So instead, I'll be using this stuff, plus some other things we'll talk about in a minute. So it says that for every 10 gallons, we need a level scoop. Okay, well I've got 70 gallons, so I need seven scoops. This stuff does smell kind of funky. It smells kind of yeasty, I guess. Uh, I'm just gonna pour it in now right into the flow and in a minute I'm gonna adjust that as well because we need more surface agitation when using this stuff to oxygenate the water. And we now got loads of bubbles on the top. So basically, the uh, because we're not an established tank, we've still got biofilm all on the surface, which you can kind of see it's got that sort of bluey tinge to it. Now that's just organic build up and you know the wood and everything just settling in. It's just trying to settle. Now I've got basically the same filter on the angelfish aquarium. I just put my finger in the water, that's why they go nuts, they think there's food. But if you look on the surface now, it's completely clear. So as, as time goes by, everything becomes balanced, the biofilm goes away. If it doesn't, then you're probably overfeeding the tank, that kind of thing, uh, there just isn't a balance. But yeah, filter-wise, look, so it's been a week. We've still got decent flow coming out, but I'd say it's reduced by about half. We're not getting really any plant movement over in this side, uh, so it's time to clean it out. Yeah, nothing, nothing special in this one at all. I've got a little bit of filter floss in the top section um, and then just a square of coarser and then a load more coarser stuff. So it's done quite a good job in that first week, hasn't it? We don't want to clean this with tap water, so I'll just get uh, some more tank water. Oh yeah, then look at this, look. Nectar for plants. Whenever you clean out one of these filters, there's always a bit of dirtiness and grime that just gets blown around for a little bit. But because it's all such clean uh, media now, it'll pick it all up in no time at all and it'll be looking great again. So it's now been a few days since you last saw the tank. Now we've had some good advancements and some 
some bad advancements as well. Mostly good though. Right, let's start with the good. So mostly overall look, it's looking great. We've got a few more issues now though, but the cyanobacteria that we did have is almost all gone, which is brilliant. You know, that stuff works a treat. And it's one of those ones where it normally fixes the problem, yeah, which would normally bring it back. But in that time, it's gonna sort of, the whole system will just get better and better and better. So the other thing that's happened now is we're starting to get some algae build up on this substrate. Now that makes sense. I mean, there's nothing sifting through it. We don't have any quarries or, or that kind of thing. So that's staying still. We're gonna have to do that manually for the time being until I feel like we're at a stage where we can add more fish to the tank. Now, of course, I jumped right in at the deep end with this one, didn't I? And I put in a lot of fish when we first started the tank. Now that's because I've got quite a lot of experience now with setting up tanks. I do a lot of testing and I'm willing to do a lot of work to compensate for the fact that there's that additional waste going in the system that isn't fully established. I also used media that uh, had been used in a previous skate and there's an internal filter as well. So my point being is that if you were to do this, you'd probably trickle feed fish in and you could probably add some quarries now, for instance, say if you had half the amount of fish I went for overall, you could add, I don't know, five or six quarries. Well, I'm not at a stage yet when I'll be adding any more fish, but that's just because I chose to do it this way of putting in a lot to start with. I just couldn't resist. I couldn't resist this. <laughs> One thing I really need to get is a step ladder because I keep just using this chair, which swings everywhere whenever I've got to get deep into one of these tanks. <laughs> but like step ladders are one of those purchases. It's just boring, isn't it? You just, you just don't want to do it. <laughs> right, so this, whoa, spinning. <laughs> so this is really simple. All I'm going to use is my tongs and just, look at that, stirring it up. Stir it up everywhere. Be careful of the front glass, obviously. Now the thing with algae is it reacts to light, doesn't it? So you can see underneath where the light can't actually hit the gravel, it's all pretty clear. And just disturbing it like this as well will help massively to um, sort of stop it spreading. I do feel like it's actually calmed down now since the initial burst of algae that's happened. Um, there we go, that's halfway done already. So it's nice and easy. It's not like this is a real time consuming thing. I'm thinking about lightening up the substrate actually. I'm gonna see how this looks afterwards. And I might add in a different tone because at the moment, oh, sorry. <laughs> Just whacked one of the uh, angel fish. Um, yeah, thinking about um, light, uh, darkening it up a bit because it's so white, isn't it? I, it's not the most natural of looks, but um, I wasn't expecting it to stay white and it hasn't. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to go this green either, but yeah, just putting some other, I don't know, like a bit of a tan in it, tan sand, not too much, not like covering it, but just like a 50-50 might make the whole thing look a little bit better, I think. There we go, that looks nice and clean again, kind of. I mean, the water's all misty now, but yeah, look at this. Look, this is, ha that's not how the tank, the tank is brighter than that. This is how the tank actually looks. Yeah, the tank looks a lot more like that. But the problem is with this substrate is that it goes so bright versus the rest of the tank that it just messes up the whole look on camera. It's different in person, but like I'm the only one here and I'm trying to show everyone else. So I'm thinking if I add this sort of darker tone to it, I think I can make it look really, really good on camera and in person all the time. Yeah, so this is the sound I've got. Now on its own, I felt like it was too sort of orangey, but mixed with the white, I think it will work well. Now, if you want to change your substrate, you've got two options. Now you could just suck all of that out, well, most of it out with a siphon and a pipe, you know, get down there, put it in a bucket, whatever, save it for enough project and then put more in. Or you can do what I'm doing, which I'm mixing the two tones and hopefully you get somewhere in the middle that we like. And if we don't, I'm gonna have to take it all out, aren't I? <laughs> but I think the main takeaway here is that if you're not happy with something, you should change it because you're gonna be far, far more interested and gonna look after it better if you look at it every time and go, wow. Right, hopefully this goes as smoothly as I'm expecting it to. Big old scoop there, look. And then we can just gently put this in the water and it'll fit, I'll show you. Yeah, look, if we just gently lay it down like that, the water will fill up inside the jug. It's really slowly, look at that. <laughs> And then once it gets near the top, you can just gently submerge the whole thing. And then you can literally pour it like a liquid over everything. Now I wanna do this quite sort of, you know, like mixy mixy. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna to have to mix it all by hand, but at the moment I'm just roughly putting it, you know, in equal proportions. Sorry, angelfish, sorry. 
Um, this still, again, now looks way more orangey than I actually want it to, but I think it'll be fine once they all start to mix in. I'll probably want even more sand, to be honest, than what I've got here. Just going around all the corners and that, look. And this side as well. It's cool, isn't it? It just pours like water. When does sand pour like water? Right now. So this is all just basically going to be trial and error because I don't know what is enough, what isn't enough. I might mix it now and it all just disappears. Actually, to be honest, even like that, it's starting to look better already. Need to mix it in though. I might as well get right down there with my hands, didn't I? There we go. Okay, so right, straight away, this is telling me, I think, that I'm going to need to um, put more of that sand in. Because once it mix, mixes in with all this whiter sand, you can barely even notice it, can you? That's okay. It's better to do like not enough than have shoved so much in here that you can barely see any of the white anymore. So that's all right. It's, it's all trial and error, guys, isn't it? And quite often it's just error. <laughs> the amount of times I've messed stuff up, like thinking I was improving it and then gone, oh, that's, that's worse. But it doesn't matter because, you know, out of every sort of failure, every five failures, you might get what, something that's good that you'll take to the next set up or build and it just works well. Yeah, so what that's told me, I need way, way more. Probably gonna need most of that uh, bag that I've got, to be honest. Right, we are currently an absolute mess, but I think once this clears, you're gonna see this is far more sort of natural looking. I think it looks way better. Again, you live and learn. So when I set this up, I thought, oh, I'll go for a really white substrate. Never again. I didn't like it really when I did it, but I thought, you know, as it matures, it will become less white, but it's attracting too much algae and it looks terrible on camera for me. So in a minute, like this is gonna clear up and look way better, I think, far more natural looking. So I've gone away and come back, still not clear, and I'll do anything to avoid water changes, won't I? <laughs> I've stuck in a second internal filter. This one's just full of the white, sort of really fine filter floss. So that should clear this pretty quickly now. So we are now at 20 minutes since I added the second filter. It's starting to get there, really starting to get the fish are exploring more. Um, I just think everything looks way better with this substrate. Look how natural that's starting to look now. We've still got a fair way to go, but I want it absolutely crystal clear the next time we show the tank. Oh, I can't wait. So it has now been a couple of hours. <laughs> looks amazing. Just check that out. It's like there's no water in there, isn't it? You can tell it obviously does have water because it's rippling. Uh, angelfish at the back, all good. There's one at the top there. Where's the rest? Where are the rest of you? Oh, they're, oh, they're huddled in this little corner down here. And there's usually a couple around here as well. Oh, there we go. There's two down in there. <laughs> yeah, they'll get more settled in a little bit, but we know everything's all right because the rummy nose lure have got nice big red noses. Now they don't have that when something's a little off. Um, oh, there goes the floating plants. <laughs> I've left them with long roots, but just because the more roots I'm thinking, you know, the more nutrient absorption, we're gonna get any sort of algae issues, it's gonna stop that. But, you know, now we haven't got that massively reflective surface on the bottom. We've actually taken away a huge amount of light from the aquarium, um, but not from the plants, because obviously the lights are hitting all the plants. They're doing really well. I can tell straight away they're doing well because we've got great new growth. So if you see the limb, the feeler, for instance, there, all that really bright stuff at the top is brand new sort of shoots that are coming off. That stuff grows super fast anyway, but even more so when you give it a bit more light. And all that pearl weed you can see in the middle there, again, the brighter stuff right at the, tip, at the tips of each stem, all brand new growth. So I know we've got good lighting here, and I'm really, really happy now that not only is the lighting good for the plants, it's now good for the camera. Look at that. So cool to see. What? <laughs> Should I get more? Should I get more rummy nose? <laughs> Maybe like double the rummy nose, double the cardinals. I mean, not, not to start with, I'm not. First of all, I want to get some more corys because they need to go all over the bottom. And I'm thinking about using the corys that are over in the cory only tank. So this right here is my cory only tank. Now, I love corys. But, oh, there's a few other fish in here because I've just broken down another tank I'm doing a build video for. So we've got a few of the uh, endless, endless here. We've got some, actually there's a killifish right there looking at me right now. But what I was saying was that corys without any diver fish seem to stay hidden pretty much all the time. That is, of course, unless it's feeding time. But I didn't know this, you see, because I've never kept 
Kauris on their own before. Now, since putting some diver fish in there, I'm seeing them coming out in the open a lot more. And also, the um, Kauri, the Pippi Kauris, they've been coming out a lot more too, now that it's a diver fish. Now, these diver fish aren't staying in here because they're going in other setups, which means we'll be back to just having the Kauris. So I'm thinking, that tank needs Kauris, or I would like to have Kauris for it. So why not take them all out here, do something else again in here? I mean, it's doing very well, but uh, why not switch it up? So yeah, that's definitely something I'm gonna be doing soon. I think it'll add a whole new element to the tank. It's always better with more fish, isn't it? But it's too soon to do it right now. So make sure you're subscribed and all that jazz and notification-y thingies <laughs> so that you don't miss that when I do add them. It'll be a very obvious title, adding Kauris to the Angelfish Aquarium. <laughs>